Welcome back to the next episode of Wide Open the Podcast. I am your host, Tony Gonzalez. And uh, you know what, folks? This, this is this is a, a dream guest for me, uh, somebody that I grew up watching a lot as a child, like everybody else in the world, the whole world. Uh, I'm sitting here with Mike Tyson. Thank you, Tony. And uh, I tell you what, man, uh, we just got I actually just got done doing his podcast and we had some great conversation. We're gonna pick back up probably right where we left off. And but uh just really phenomenal, man. Thank you. Thank for, no, thank for you for coming. Show, Listen, man, I watch you from a distance far, and I was I had an opinion about you that's just so wrong. I just, you yes, sir, you're a beautiful man. Oh, well, thank you, man. Thank you. Um and Getting about you, you know, on this show, Wide Open, it's all about helping people level up and be the best version of themselves. And, and I think that's great is told through stories. And, and uh, I just, yeah, it's, it's been documented, but I want to know a little bit about just briefly the type of childhood that you had oh, really? growing up. Oh, hey, check this out. Um, how did I grow up? I grew up, um, that's interesting. I grew up... I don't know. I grew up in Brooklyn, New York. Mm -hmm. Listen, at one time it looked nice. And then I realized that um, we had to move. And then the more we moved, the darker it got. Mm -hmm. The less white people we saw. You know, I started in Bedford-Stuyvesant, and it was uh, not a bad neighborhood at that time. White people lived in the neighborhood and all that stuff. And then um, something happened, I guess. Hard times or something. And we had to go, and we went to, from Bedford Stuyvesant, we went to Brownsville. Mm -hmm. And Brownsville was just, whew, it was just, whoa, real aggressive and black. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. anything's and, capable. Whatever's capable, whatever could be done to a human being is being done. Mm -hmm. Anything that could be done to a human being down there is being done. And it was you and your, and your mother? Me, and your my mother, my sister, my brother. Everybody in my family was smart. They knew how to read, write. They were, they were fucking phenomenal, right? And I didn't know how to do that. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Was academics, I mean, was that stressed growing up in... Uh... That just wasn't who I was. Just wasn't who you were. Okay. It wasn't who I was. I was the guy... I saw guys on the corner, just like everybody. I saw them on the corner, and I realized on the corner, nobody fucked with those guys. Mm -hmm. You know, if they had fights, they fought on the corner among themselves or whatever. But I know nobody outside of that crew messed with those guys on the corner. You know, so I wanted to be a street guy. Mm -hmm. So bad. I wanted to be a street guy so bad. I don't know why, because I was always getting beat up and bullied, and people were taking stuff from me. Uh -huh. Yeah, so I, was, I grew up, I didn't feel safe at home. My mother, like I was saying, my mother, um, very promiscuous. My father's a pimp gangster. My father is a motherfucker. Mm -hmm. I, ooh, fuck. Mm, but yeah, so I, I, I'm really dark nigga. Mm -hmm. I'm really dark. I'm a dark nigga that's sort of light. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's, what I, that's who I am. See, you know, I just told you that story about, and a lot of people know the story on here, but real quickly, you know, I had a bully. You know, somebody came to beat me up every day. It's just, it's so interesting to hear you say that, that people tried to pick on you as a kid. Woo! It's interesting. I mean, listen. A, what, they first did whatever of all, why? they wanted to me because I'm a fucking bitch, because I'm a punk, because I'm a fucking victim. Uh huh. Uh huh. That's why, because they can. Yeah. And off of that, though, you said, I want to. Uh, did you want to be a boxer? Was that something that no you way. wanted to be growing up? Like, no. how did how did boxing come into it? Hey, so listen. it wasn't a thing of self defense for you. It was just no. Um, listen, my first fight. I used to. I'm a pigeon guy. I always fly. I fly birds, pigeons. Yeah. So, um, my first fight. This guy um, took one of my pigeons, and so um, I said, "Please, give my bird back." He's an older guy. I must have been nine. He must have been 15 or 12, 15, 13. He was a teenager. And I said, give my bird. And he said, fuck you, fat nigga. So he took my bird's, he gripped my bird's head off, and he hit me with the fucking bird. Mm -hmm. And um, some other guy that used to abuse me and bully me, he said, yo, man, fight him back. He, he just said, man, fuck. He just got tired. Everybody just said, fuck this shit, man. You got to do something. And um, I fought back. I never fought nobody before. I fought back, and you know what? I can fight real good. Mm -hmm. So after that, everybody would bring other kids from different neighborhoods around to fight me for money. Really? 
So I would fight for money. Yeah, I would, you know, guys would give me some stuff. I would just fight people from different neighborhoods and stuff. Mm-hmm. And um, that's the only thing I thought I could do. So I was, uh, I was, um, I was really, hey, like, listen, I'm not showing off a bragging. I was just really a good fighter. I yeah. was just born. A, I'm scared to find my fucking chicken, but I'm just a good fighter. Uh-huh. Fuck. Uh huh. Just I, the spirit to fight. Yeah. But I'm afraid. I'm scared. I'm, I'm, I'm that world. I'm just scared. I'm a victim. Uh huh. And then um, I got locked up. I became a criminal. I'm knocking people out, taking their money. So, um, it's, listen, I'm fighting men. I'm 12 years old. I'm, nine, I'm 11 years old. I'm fighting men. I'm fucking up men, 20 years old. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm the, I become the knockout guy. I'm knocking out guys, and we're going in their pockets. And so that's, my whole life has been violent, and I'm not a violent person. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? I, no, I believe you. I feel like that so, parallels um, me. Yeah. So I've, um, I go, to, I get locked up, and I go to Sparfit, and then Sparfit. It's around 79, 78, and then Sparfit. One day, Muhammad Ali comes and visits the kids, the rest, of, you know, the kids that are fucked up in this juvenile detention. And then I said, I, the people that have kicked our ass all the time, you know, the staff there. I see them crying. I see them. When they see Ali. They cry. I don't know what to do. I said, "Fuck!" I said, "I bet you nobody picks on him." And so later on, a couple of months, I do in Sparfit. So I go to another place. They shipped me off to another place. And I, my next place is a gentleman named Irish Bobby Stewart. He's an ex-professional fighter. So he, he started teaching me how to box, kicking my ass. But then he started teaching me. He just wanted to let you know, you know listen, I'm the man. Mm-hmm. You know, I had a reputation in the institution system. So he had to check me, right? I'm only 12 or 13 at the time. But um, I was amongst the men. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. But anyway, listen, all right? So he takes me to Customato, and um, he teaches me how to box. And when I first go there and I, I see Cus's house, this man, this Victorian man, and I think to myself, because I'm going to rob these white motherfuckers. <laughs> uh-huh. Stupid motherfucking crackers going to let me come in their house and they're going to look out for me. Stupid white motherfuckers. And then um, I started talking to him. And um, he said, do you know, um, you're really good looking. Have you notice how I just noticed you're a good looking guy? So I'm thinking this nigga's a pervert. He's a fay, want to fuck me or something. So, oh, what the fuck are you doing? But he's building my confidence. Uh-huh. He's telling me, look in the mirror. Tell yourself how beautiful you are. Love yourself. This is your life right now. This is, he introduced me to the mirror. The mirror's been my life ever since. I look uh-huh. into the mirror and I, phew, I'm almost making love to the mirror. I'm in love with myself. But then when I'm out the mirror, I'm dark and low. Uh-huh. So, um, well, anyway, he started teaching me. I met Customato, and he just blew my mind. Uh-huh. With, um, if you listen to me, people will name their children after you. Uh-huh. He just was telling me, he was fucking blowing my ego up. It's like, you know, he made me believe that I was better than everybody, which was wrong. But how, what a, how were you able to accept that? Did, were you able to accept that easily? Was this the first time anybody in your life has ever told you something like that? Listen, um... I came there to rob these white people, these stupid white motherfuckers going to bring this nigga in from the gutter in their house and they're going to treat him like a family, this stupid white motherfucker. And then um, uh, I became a slave to him. Mm-hmm. I needed his, I, his every word. I needed him to say, is this okay? Can I do this? He became my, he became my conscious. Uh-huh. You know? uh-huh. But there's something, like if I can go up to somebody right now and go, hey, you know what? You're destined for greatness. A lot of people are like, nah, I'm not going to do that. No, but I you. lived with him, so he had a chance to work on me. He had a chance to peel those layers, break me down, and build me back up. Uh huh. What were some of the things he would tell you that was like, man, I got this? Like, to. Because I'm a big believer. We talked about this. Like, if, Listen, once you give a person confidence, they cannot be stopped. All right, let me just tell you this. All right? I'm not going to go through all the, the basics. When there's, um, it's October 2nd. 1980, Ali fights Larry Holmes. Mm-hmm. We go to Albany, New York. We live in Castle. We go 30 miles north to Albany, New York, and we watch it on pay per view. And um, after that fight, after the fight, we got in the car. No one talked. So we drove 30 miles back to Catskill. We all opened the door. We all went to our rooms. We never talked. The next morning, Cus is on the phone with Muhammad Ali. And, whoa, my, my feelings are going back there. Ali is calling, I mean, 
Cuss is calling Larry home so many bad. How do you let that bum hit on you, Chip Ali? How do you let that bum? Why you let that bum beat on you? Know, Cuss, he's almost getting sensitive, you know, emotional. Why is the bum almost crying? He's a fucking bum. Why you let him hit you? Why you let him beat up? Ooh, fuck, I'm going back there. Mm-hmm. Ooh, so I talked to Ali on the phone. He said, I have a 14-year-old kid. He's going to be heavyweight champ of the world. His name is Mike Tyson. Please tell him to listen to me. He don't know I heard him say that. I was listening. I was, uh, I'm always, every time he talks on the phone, he's talking to very important people sometimes. Norman Mayer, all the Bud Schuberg, all these great writers and stuff. So um, I'm always on the side hear what he's talking about and stuff. And um, he said, the young black, he's 15, so he's going to be champ of the world. Tell him to listen to me. So he called me, and I act like I didn't know. Duh. So I was on the phone, and I'm on the phone, I'm crying. And, and he was saying, but I said, when I get big, I'm going I'm to get him for you. I'm going to revenge you. I'm going to find some stupid shit. I'm going to restore your honor. Mm. So I'm 14 or 15 in 1980, something like that. And I, who the fuck? I'm a bum. I got a couple of amateur fights. And I, I'm going to avenge the great Muhammad Ali. He laughed. He didn't even listen to me. He's still talking. He didn't listen to anything I said. And then January 22nd, I'm fighting him. And then Ali comes into the ring and says, get him for me. Mm. You know? Mm-hmm. And um, I did that, but I just really, you just can't, um, how great of a fighter Larry Holmes is. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, he was a great man. It's just that he had, to, he had to beat a legend. You know, he had to beat him up bad. But it's just he did what he was supposed to do. He but Larry Holmes was such a magnificent fighter. Yeah, I remember very, uh, hearing about that fight. That Larry was crying after yeah, the fight because he felt fighter. so bad about being there. But uh, but talk about the love that you had for boxing at the beginning. Like, what did it what did it represent in your life at that time? Were you in love with it at the beginning, or was it something? Hey, I got this gift. And everybody is telling me how great it is, so I'm going to go do it because did of that? I, or did no, you really no, um, love boxing? I'm trying to find the words to express it and, and explain it. I was, um, I, was aware, I was aware of my preeminence. Mm-hmm. I was aware of everything I was doing. I was aware that I could become famous and the world could listen to me, that I could be somebody and my ego could just suck all this up. Yeah. My cousin, all, we're all ego-driven. Listen, when I first met, because I thought they were living good, but he's living... With um, his woman companion, and this is her house. All this stuff is hers. And he convinced us somewhere that we're going to get a great champion. We got to turn this into a, tra- a training camp because he's a fanatic fight. That's all he lived for is fighting. He said, let's change this Victorian House 14. Let's change this into a training camp. Mm-hmm. She convinced him to do this shit and had people sponsoring him. And then um, I came along. He was born in 2000. He was 1908. I'm born in 1966. So, um, my life was changed in 19, um, 1908. Isn't that true? Something when you yeah. think about it, my life was changed in 1908. Yeah. was my destiny. And from being with Cuss, um, Cuss is, um, what I was trying to explain, Cuss is very delusional. You know? That's like myself. Uh-huh. What do you mean by that, but delusional? Ooh. De- delusional in the sense that, like, hey, to say something like that, like, you're going to be heavyweight champion. Most people don't have that audacity to listen, say something like that. Listen, Is that when what you I mean? say delusional, I say delusional in a magnificent way. Yeah. Delusional is my way of life. Uh-huh. You know, I, I even think that I'm, I always think about war and money and destiny. And so in my mind, I say, to listen, the God of war because they're women. Um, most of them are women. The God of fortune, the God of destiny. And I'm, and in my mind, I'm thinking, like, wow, the God of war, he made love with them and them, and I'm a descendant of them. You know, my ego tells me that I'm a descendant of greatness, that I'm, you know? Uh-huh. And it has nothing to do with my parents and my family and nothing. They were just a vessel, and I'm very special. Yeah. You know, but then um, when I'm around people, I always have to disguise myself as, hey, guys, how you doing? Uh-huh. But, when I'm alone, I think I'm a monk. I think I'm a Alexander the Great. I got thousands of people following me, and I'm raising hell. I would see. I would. I love to dive into that because I want to know, like, where does that come from? Like, how do my low self esteem? Low self esteem meaning what? Like, like uh, don't think much of myself. But you think that you're destined for this, this, and you did. It came to fruition. It happened. No, this is nothing. This uh-huh. boxing, all this shit, is nothing. Uh huh. 
this is nothing. All this, what you're doing in football, what we're doing now, it's nothing. Your thoughts, your thinking, it's nothing. Mm-hmm. It's meaningless. It's just um, our evolving of who we are to the next species. We're just passing it on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I mean, when you're... The, the reason I'm asking this now... Why are you who you are? Why are you ask the way that you are? Why are you conscious of what people think about? Uh-huh. Why do you feel that way? I, I say it's the way God made me. I don't know. I mean, it's just since I was a little kid, I've always been this curious person. Have you ever person. been shamed in your life? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That's why, listen, this, check this out. Um, we're born, we live in life, and then something happens that makes me the way I am, makes you the way you are. If something has to happen. It doesn't, it doesn't go vicariously. Hey, we live in life and we change into that person that we are now. Mm-hmm. That doesn't work that way. Something happens to change us into this person. Mm-hmm. So um, I was a little kid one day and, um, this, oh, this is going to be interesting. It's about growing. I didn't understand these guys that used to bully me all the time. They got me involved with flying pigeons, but not in a good way. So the birds they had were like fucking disgusting birds. They weren't in good shape. So they land on another roof. So they, yo, sure, to go chase the bird, go. So I had to go in this building, and there's people in the fucking, you know how people stand in the front of their building, another crew, and then they say, what the fuck you doing in this building, nigga? You the only body in this building? I got to go through all that shit to fly the bird. And then they say, hey, go to the store. Get me this. Get me that. And then they tell me this. At the end of the day, they say, hey, we're going to the jam tonight. I'm going to, and I say, can I come? I'm a stupid ass nigga, like nine or ten years old. Can I come? But I didn't never I never understood about um I didn't know you had to wash and stuff. So I go to the party, the little dance, and I got shit and I got tar on me from the birch. I didn't understand about cleaning the hygiene. I don't know that stuff yet. But these guys do. And so when I get there, everybody's laughing. You know this bummy ass nigga, this nasty, get the fuck out of here, nigga. And somebody might even kick me or hit me or something. Or beat me up or something, because I just don't look like them. I'm not fly. Yeah. And so um the guy, some guy that was there, but he um, he doesn't fly pigeons with those guys, but he was just hanging out with them. He said, yo, shorty, meet me at the coop on the roof, nigga. He said, get out of there, meet me. The, and uh, so I went back to Fly Bird, and he was there, and he said, come on, come with me. And so we went robbing houses that whole day. Mm-hmm. And um, he didn't give me much money. He gave me like 100, 200 bucks. But what he did do was take me shopping. He got me fly. And... um. I went back to that place, and those people didn't remember who I was. Mm. They didn't know they was in, well, They just respected me. They thought I was fly. They looked at my clothes, saw my jewelry. I was, I was only 10 years old, nigga. Mm-hmm. I got jewelry. I got watches. I got fucking with jewelry, watch, long jean watches. I missed a fly. And so um, I realized that um, people were shallow, and that I, to this day, it's still hanging. Look how I dress my clothes. All my clothes are expensive clothes and shit. Because I hide my filth and stuff. I hide my insecurity. Mm-hmm. And that's what all they were doing. They were all very disgusting, insecure people, but they hide their filth with beautiful clothes and jewelry and stuff. And that's what I learned from the hood. Yeah, We were all hiding our filth by beauty. We use that. That's our, our mask of, um, what is that? What is the mask of humility? A mm-hmm. mask of... It's just a mask. It's not who we are. Uh-huh. That ego that, that we... I learned from my mentor. He said, we're never by these who we appear to be. I'm not who I appear to be. You're not who you appear to be. When we're in this kind of outing, like we're all together, nobody's who they appear to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, put the mask. Yeah. The mask we wear, stuff like that. The mask of sanity. Uh-huh. That's what I said. The mask of sanity. That was the book. I was, I was um, I'm an insecure guy because I don't have education, so I read so many books. Yeah. I want people to think I'm intelligent. But I'm intelligent without the books. Yeah. My whole life has been absorbed by books. Yeah, but you're a curious person, Mike. Huh? You're a curious person. That's one thing, just do it, sitting down with you for the last hour and a half. You know, I did the po- podcast with you before. And sitting down here with you now, you, no matter what happens to you in life, you always keep moving forward. You keep staying curious. You want to learn. You have this thirst for knowledge. And you listen. So that's kind of like, where did that come from? Is that part of, you said, you used the word destiny. Do you think it's just, were you born for that? Or did you develop that? Did you hear that from somebody um, along the way? I don't know why I was born. I wish sometimes, you know, I look at this in life. I I don't know why I'm searching for something. Because it keeps me away from finding out more about who I am. That's what we do in life. We avoid finding out who we are. So we get involved with so many other things. And we we create um, landmarks. You know, we do great things because we're trying to avoid who we are. But who we are comes out in our work. 
Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. That's how big that's how big is um misconception. We there's no secrets, nigga. Mm-hmm. There's no secrets. We're as sick as our secrets. There's no secrets. Everybody listen, you'd be surprised people they they know more about you, but you just you just don't talk to them. Mm-hmm. Some people know who I am. They know who we are. They can just read us and know who we are, you know? Mm-hmm. And we don't want to fuck and fuck with those people, you know? Uh-huh. Well, let's talk. And a lot of that is, is fear. And we talked about that. What's your, fear-based world. What's your thoughts on fear? Fear is my friend. Uh-huh. I love fear. Fear, fear. fear allows me to reach my highest potential. Mm-hmm. The fear of failing is an illusion. Yeah. Fear is an illusion, but we have to have desire. We have to have something that pushes us. Fear pushes us. Uh-huh. We don't understand that living prepares us for death, our life. It prepares us for death. Uh-huh. You know, Even if we die young, it prepares us. So just the fact that we're losing guys like Kobe lose. We're just moving people in our family. There's people dying it's around us all every day, so we prepare for it. Mm-hmm. We understand that, but we avoid it. Do you have any methods for getting through fear? Excuse me? Do you have any methods? Like, how do you, how do you get through fear? What if, if somebody says, yes, I'm afraid right now, and uh, whether it's preparing for a fight or a football game or a business meeting or I'm going to ask this girl out, like, how do you, how do you get through that fear? What, what? I just tell you, listen, this is the thing, right? Whatever we do in the sports, life, and when, you don't, when, that, when you don't have that feeling no more, it's over. Mm-hmm. When you don't get that fear no more, it's over. Yeah. Meaning that it's got to, like, that's, that's, that's the measurement stick. That, that's, that's how you know you're going in the right direction. It keeps us alive. Yeah. Listen, you think a deer. A deer comes to a lake. He feels the intention is a lion in the tree. So normally he'll jump 50 feet. But with that fear, he jumped 40 feet. Yeah. You know, it's the flight of, it's survival. Our fear makes us think things that don't even exist. Our biggest fear never happened. Mm-hmm. Whatever we're afraid of in life, our biggest fear never happens. We go to our grave saying, "Well, this shit never happened. I was waiting for this. It never came." You yeah. know, it's just um, it motivates us. Our that's, fear. That's the direction that you need to go. Without our fear, fear, we're nothing. I know. We get hit by cars every fucking day. We just walk out. We're oblivious. Fear keeps us conscious of our existence. It keeps us um, conscious of knowing that we're mortal. So, before each fight, were you afraid? <laughs> Listen, right? And I'm a guy, I'm conscious. I understand the process of fear. Since I was 13, I understand the process I was taught. And I just, I'm a little bit scared. I'm crying before. But, <laughs> but I don't know why I'm, I'm not crying to get my ass kicked. I'm crying because I'm going to lose fame. People are not going to love me no more. I'm not going to be nothing. I'm going to go back to Brownsville. Nobody else, no, I'm a failure in life. I'm nothing. I'm a bitch ass nigga. And then I'm a, and then as soon as they say it's time to go, I turn into a monster. How does that happen? How do you think it happens? I don't. I feel like for me, I had to do the same thing. I used to cry. I used to be so nervous. I used to tell myself I'm not playing football anymore when I first started. Even after I went through my failure of Pop Warner, when I got to freshman football, sophomore year of football, I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm so scared right now, the butterflies. And then we go out there after that first hit. It's like, okay, I'm in the game now. And I loved it while it was going on. And then after the game, we'd go back to that, like, little bit of fear. What did you know about projecting? You mean getting out in front of it, seeing it happen before it happens, or? Throwing it out there. Uh-huh. You know, listen, check this out. And I know we're on your cast, right? Uh, where I came from, everybody abused me, beat my ass, kicked my ass, whatever they wanted to me. And now I'm the baddest nigga on the planet. Well, so what they say. Yeah. How does that happen? I'm a bitch ass nigga and I'm the baddest nigga on the planet on a stage and telling everybody, come on, I wanna fight you bitch. I, I'm doing every, I'm just, I brought my fucking pain with me. I kept, that's what I don't do no more. I don't bring my fucking pain with me. Yeah. And I fucked my career because I brought my fucking pain in the past, but it enhanced me to do so much fucking incredible shit. Yeah. But it fucked me up. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I got addicted to fucking chaos. Mm. And once mm. you're addicted to that, you fucking. Yeah. You, I'm surprised I'm still alive. I didn't. I, I didn't die. Normally, when you're addicted to chaos, you die. You saw these guys. You see the guys before us, the wild guys. I don't want to mention any. You know, when yeah. you, they just can't stop. I couldn't stop. Yeah. I couldn't 
couldn't stop. I used to get, listen, I used to get convicted on a rape case, and then I'm fucking, I'm in the club still picking up girls. I can't stop. Yeah. I used to get convicted. I'm still out in the club picking up girls, going and I'm picking girls in the club, taking them in the hotel. I used to not stop. Yeah. Yeah. I was just like, I'm fucking just about, I just can't stop. Mm-hmm. You know, I just couldn't stop. Yeah. I didn't want to stop. You know, I had to get rock bottom. I had to almost die to stop. So you hit your rock bottom. I don't know, I don't know what that is. Um, when you hit something like that and to see where you are now. Nigga, my rock become, bottom is when I won the championship. That was your rock bottom? Yeah. The first time? The f- yeah, yeah. When I won the championship, yeah, 20 years yeah, old, 20 that years was old. my rock yeah. bottom without me even knowing it. It appeared to be my fucking, um, my destiny, my life, yeah, but that was my up. rock bottom. And you say it because it was too glamorous? It was too, no, too because, much um, temptation there? No, because it was everything, because I made it happen. Mm-hmm. Do you know? You don't even know. You made this happen. You, you did the hard work, but this is, um, this is your mind. You made this happen before you even started doing this shit, before you even liked playing football. You made this happen. It was destined for you to be who you are. You think you're doing it yourself. You think it because you're hard work. It was destined for you to be who you are, nigga. Mm-hmm. You think you're controlling. I noticed that you think you're in control. You're not. Yeah. You're not in control at all. But you, you believe you are because I can see how you, you work. Yeah. You're, you're yeah. not, brother. You're not. This is happening because somebody, something wants it to happen. Uh-huh. You're just a vessel. You're a vessel and you're helping other people. You're just a, you're inspiring other people, but you're nothing. We, you're, you're being used. I'm being used. Mm-hmm. You know, but we, we're not as important as we think we are. Uh-huh. We're just, we're just tools to inspire some other people to do great shit. But we're nothing. Uh-huh. We're not who we think we are, though. I don't think we're nothing, but we're not who we think. We're really great. We're everything, but we're nothing. Isn't that something? Yeah. We're everything, but we're nothing. What does that mean? Mm-hmm. What do you think you are? Yeah. Would you believe if I said you're a germ? Well, you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to believe that because you have a bad, um, what a germ is, bad, um, you know, perspective yeah. on what a germ is. But that's what we are. Why is it that if all the ants, take this, all the ants, they're so small. Well, if they all died, the world would fucking f- perish. If all the birds died, the world would perish. If all the humans died, the world would fucking flourish. Why is that? Because mm-hmm. we're fucking germs. We're germs. You know, I, I killing love, the world, killing the fucking planet. I, I love this about you that most people don't think that though. They think that way. They they don't even they don't even go that way to even ask those questions. Like those questions don't even come up, but they come up with you. And uh, it's fascinating to, to to hear you talk about this stuff. Just you know why I say that because let's be in germs because I um because we don't think of germs as being intelligent. That's why, because um, when you think of syphilis, I was looking at the history of syphilis, and syphilis started out as a fucking skin rash. Mm-hmm. Can you believe that? Since, you know, biblical times, it's just a skin rash. But um, people started getting clean up, whatever happened, and it was, um, it's intelligence. So it said, whoa, I want to survive, just like us. I want to survive. So instead of being a skin, little skin disease, we can take care of it. But it was dying. It was getting ready to get its thing. So it went into our blood. So it, said it became a blood disease. Because it wants to survive. You can't imagine that a disease, a venereal disease, think like we do, do you? Mm. How can I live? How can I survive? I got to hatch onto this prison. If I don't, I'm going to die. Matter of fact, if I got to get strong. And, matter of fact, do you know, um, I'm sure you do, that um, the diseases, the venereal, are getting so strong that the, the vaccines are not working no more. Yeah, they keep. They're surviving. They need to survive just like us. Everything They're doing anything to, to survive. They're getting stronger, so now the vaccines can't help us. Yeah. Our job is to get rid of these scumbags, which is us. Uh-huh. That's what the disease is. Our job is the disease. The job of the disease is to get rid of us. Mm-hmm. You know, we're a problem to the earth. We don't want to believe our ego tells us that we're that we're doomed, but we're a problem to our earth. Uh huh. The earth it, has a very difficult time functioning with us living here. I think in this is where in that in our level of consciousness at times. But if we shift that, this is part of the reason I think you and I maybe do our show. Maybe at least for me is I'm trying to, to help that, to help that consciousness, to get people to learn how to just, to have success, not just being rich and famous or a champ or, or a hall of famer. I'm talking just living a beautiful life, like filled with joy and happiness and peace. Okay. What is that? 
And that is what I'm after. That is why I asked the question. I know what that means towards me. And that's why I bring guests on. So what, what is that to you? What is that to you? To me? Uh-huh. What is what? What peace is, happening to all what is peace, peace for you? What is joy for you at this point in your life? What is moments? Peace? Yeah. It's just moments. It's just moments. Uh-huh. It's not um, perpetual. Mm-hmm. People are looking for perpetual happiness and joy. It doesn't function like that. Yes. That's when it's delirious. That's when you're delusional. You're like, um, oh, my poor wife. My wife is happy all the time. Even during bad situations, she may cry, but she's just basically a happy person. And she knows about the ill things out there, so, but she stays happy. And I guess that's why it balances out because I'm a, what am I? I guess I am what I am. I'm not malevolent at anybody. I guess I'm what I am. Yeah. And from my experience in living life, I know um, you just have to be practical. You have to be, living life is just not on the win. It's just, I don't know, you have to be pre-planned in a way. You have to have a goal. This is what I want to accomplish at this stage. This is what I want to come because we have different stages of our thinking. Mm-hmm. You know, it goes from crying to saying, no, I don't want to do crime no more. Listen, I, I'm a kind of guy, I go from I had too much pride to work to having too much pride. Now I have too much pride not to work. Uh-huh. How do I do that? How does that change happen? I had too much pride to fucking work. Now I have too much pride to steal. Mm-hmm. I rob, I do fucked up shit like that. I fuck somebody else and not my wife. Where did the fuck that come from? And I don't know if I really like it. Mm-hmm. How about that? It makes me look good. It's, everything is perfect. And society is perfect, but I don't think I like it. Yeah. You know, it's, you, you said this previously, uh, you're, you're transparent. I don't think anybody's more transparent than you. You will you'll say what's on your mind. You'll, when you have a feeling, I think you, you embrace it and go with it. And, and, uh, and I, at least this is what I'm saying. I remember watching you fight, and you would go in there and you do your thing. You'd knock the guy out. And then after the fight, though, you would, you would, um, you pick the guy up and you and you give him a hug, and sometimes you'd even, I think I saw you kiss a guy on the cheek and like, hey, I don't know what you were saying to him because we can't hear. Hey, listen, um, like, how do you, you go from that? That's not me. The love part. What about like you're loving him after the game? No, you're saying um, I love you, like. I, I mean, watch, you give him a hug. This, I watch Jack Dempsey. I watch the old time fighters do that. If they beat the guy, they go, they carry him to his ring and stuff. And um, I used to. Um, Oh, fuck, nigga. This is what I wanted to tell you. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not good with my emotional intelligence, but um, I'm very disciplined. Isn't that, that's, that's interesting, right? Mm-hmm. I don't have emotion. I'm not good at emotional intelligence, but I'm very different, dis- disciplined. But discipline has everything about controlling your emotions. Mm-hmm. So then I go with it. I have problems with my emotions when it's concerned love. Mm-hmm. That's 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 what it is. When it has something with a love, um, yeah, if it has some like a love introduction to it, or something, then I'm a different person. Mm-hmm. I don't have as much this, but when it comes to um, discipline and doing something, that's what I wanted to say. If you gave me an order, like if Cuss gave me an order, it was just I'm, I would do the order, and then whatever happens afterwards, I have to deal with it. And I'm like, fuck, what is this shit? But it's just while my mind is planned, it's just do it. Mm-hmm. And whatever happens, happens afterwards. You go to jail, you die, whatever. But just do it. Accomplish the objective. My, my mind works on the objective, not about my safety. Or my, the objective is my goal. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Whatever objective, like right now, my objective is to be cool, not to fuck too many. You know, and do all that shit and humiliate my family and do all that stuff. And so I don't do it. Yeah. Because that's what I did before. Fucking everybody, everything, giving my wife diseases and all that shit. I'm a monster. I don't give a fuck. Fuck you. Yeah. It's all about me. Yeah. And we mistake that for power when I believe true power is knowing you could do that, but then not doing that. That, to me, shows true power. Like, I no. could do that if I wanted to, but I don't do that because I have this over here. And maybe that's just my brain. But I have, this is where I'm going. True power, true power is, um, when you have true power, you never use the word power. Mm-hmm. Guys like me and you, we never had true power because we used the word. We used words of things that we never had, but believe that we have it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you're humble, you never have to mention that word. People that are humble never said the word humble. 
I say the word humble because I'm not humble. I don't have a humble bone in my body. But I, I always, but I act pious and kind to people and stuff. And everybody thinks I'm humble, but I don't. I want to I wanna do something. I don't think much about myself. I'm just fucking, I want to do more. I want to do more. I have a big hole sometimes. If I didn't have my wife, I would be a monster. Because mm-hmm. without my wife, she covers my big hole. Yeah. I have a hole that brings it all. It's not enough. Yeah. I have to die. My objective is to die, and it's just not enough, and I haven't died, and I said, fuck, what's wrong? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't like myself. That's where that all stems from. Mm-hmm. And your wife gives you that, that fills that hole with that love. Am I, am I saying that correctly, or is it? Because I'm a big believer. It could be your wife. It could be your kids. It could be your God. When you have something that you're living for, and I, didn't we talk about this Something, something bigger than yourself. Yeah, that, that that can guide you too. That can get you out of, out of uh, tough situations, and help you make better decisions. Uh, I don't know. Do you do you think that or is it? I don't know. It, I just, we're talking about love again. Where am I the yeah. love situation? Okay. I just think. Um, I don't know. I think um, most women, because my wife, they don't understand it. They can't comprehend the power that they possess. I don't think she's made that way to think about the power that she possesses and what she's capable of doing. Mm-hmm. She lives her life as a humble woman and a wife and stuff, but she has no idea what kind of power she possesses. Mm-hmm. She doesn't even want the power. She's probably afraid of it. Yeah. Yeah. She's always, um, this is what I, I know about my wife, and that's why we're different. That's why we get along. She's always, um, what is the word I'm looking for? The, the the, um, the caretaker. Yeah, she's a caretaker. Mm-hmm. My wife takes care of everybody. She wants to make everybody to be happy. She wants every world to be perfect. She wants to love the world, but the world is too big to love. You can love the world by loving yourself. Mm-hmm. When it's too big to hug, you have to love yourself, and then the world will come to you. You know, I don't know. And sometimes when people appear like they're loving people and they're loving everybody else, it's because they don't like themselves. I've learned this. The person that is friends with everybody is an enemy to himself. Mm-hmm. You know, really? I've never heard that one. That is a. Uh, but does it make sense to you? I'm trying to think right now. Person. Everybody's my friend. I love everybody. Yeah. But it doesn't work that way. You can't be everybody's doesn't. friend. Yeah. The world is made of polarity. You know what that is? Yeah. Yang yang. And yang. Opposites. Without without that, we can't exist. You know, without negativity, we can't be positive. Without love, we can't possess hate. Everything has to go. It just works together. Okay. It's beyond our comprehension. So, so you going, so kind of piggybacking that, so you going through, um, through your times in life that were down, your rock bottoms, do you think you had to go through that to get to where you are now? No way. I caused that. Mm-hmm. I caused all that. I didn't have to go through none of this. I caused that. I wanted to destroy myself. Mm-hmm. Listen, um, this is something that you're going to have to, I'm going to sh- explain this. Tearing yourself down at this level is just as much power as building yourself up. You know? Mm-hmm. I get the same excitement as destroying myself as I did. It's just fighting from the beginning all the way up to become who I am. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How is at this point in your life, how do you, do you have any techniques or methods for self-control? Yeah. What is it? I don't know. Give me a scenario. Self-control. Like if you see a beautiful woman, if you see too much food, I I don't know, whatever. I have no self-control. Listen, I would be lying if I said I had Mm self-control, but this is what I do have. I have experience. And I know if I fuck that girl, now what's going to happen? No, listen, this is the kind of guy I am. If I fuck you, I love you. I can't fuck nobody. I'm one of those guys. Can't do this. It affects me psychologically. Mm-hmm. I believe somebody loves me. Then I fall in love with the fact that the illusion that somebody loves me. And um, at the end of the game, at the end of the day, I say... It was just an illusion. But I fell in love with the illusion that somebody could love me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The way that I think I should be loved. 
Mm-hmm. I'm sure you're not loved the way you think you should be loved, but the illusion of thinking that no one's loved the way they should be loved, they don't believe. I don't care how much you think you're with your wife, you always think you want more. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. And that's part of finding that balance. I guess some, a lot of what I'm in search of is finding balance. Finding. Oh, no, balance will find you. Listen, you're not going to find it. It's mm-hmm. going to find you. And I'm going to find that. Listen. And I'm going to find Because I see how you, you, you you're, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Cushioned. No, not cushioned. But you're pretty protected. You're isolated. You're, you're protected, you know. And sometimes um, in order to find these places where we want to, the balance, we got to find pain that's also associated with pain. You're avoiding pain. You don't want to associate, but every all of our enlightenment comes from pain. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. I don't know the, the degree of pain, but I just know our enlightenment comes from. Pain. I agree with that for sure. Our relationship with God comes from pain. Yeah, or that universe, so to speak. Yeah, there's no way to it. I mean, it's the shit moments in life. I've always said are the fertilizer. That's what you have to have to get to wherever you want to go. Like we talked about, going through your fear. It's going to be tough. It's going to be hard. Uh, but the balance that I'm, that I'm saying is like, how do you, how do you balance? Because I'm a big believer that you have to have, I've read a lot of books on, um, on tenacity and, and, and being aggressive. And you have to feel like when you step on that football field or you step in that ring or you step into that meeting room, whatever it is, you better feel like, yeah, and trust it's, it's, it's trust. Instead of saying you have to own the moment and say, I got this, but you can say, I trust it, that, I kn- that, I, that I'm going to get through this. And I surrender to whatever happens. At least that's the point that I'm trying to get to all the time. Do you, how do you approach life now with, with goals? Do you, do you set goals? Do you have goals? Wow. Um, I think I do, but I think I don't. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. What goals do I have? I just want to, um, my goal is, um, a lot of people's success is different. Listen, a guy like me, right? I'm keeping it real, mm-hmm. right? A success for me is not being in prison. Mm-hmm. Success for me is not fucking somebody that's not my wife. Mm-hmm. Um, success for me is just not, um, just not being around some people I shouldn't be around. That I love to be around. That's success for me. Mm-hmm. This life right here, living the good, being with my wife, and everything is success for me. Because listen, I was doing so much drugs and so much shit, my dick wouldn't get hard, right? So I said, fuck. And I'm saying my wife is going to leave me. I know somebody fucking her because I can't fuck her, right? But I didn't know it was because I just thought it was some bullshit. I, can't, I, I didn't know it was because I'm doing so much fucking cocaine and all that drinking and shit. My dick died, right? So, um... I stopped that stuff, right? So I met these guys, did the toad, I stopped that stuff, and my... Um, my dick started getting hard again, right? So I went and took my AIDS test because she thought I was, I had to so make sure we didn't, I didn't have AIDS and shit. She was tripping about that. So um, I'm saying to myself, but I know it's because I'm not using drugs, but I'm saying, wow, in my mind, I want it to be this. It's because um, I'm not cheating on my wife and God um, bless me with another chance to make my dick hard so I can make love to my wife. But I know the fact, the real is because I'm not doing drugs anymore and I'm living a perfect life, but I like the other reason better. I like to lie better. Isn't that some bullshit? Mm. The lie that God, that God is giving me my dick back because I'm not doing that shit no more. I'm not living that kind of life. That's what I want to believe, but it's not. It's because I changed my life from living a clean, functional life. Now my dick is hard again. But I, well, I like the story that I did it because God chastised me. Does that make any sense? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, <laughs> okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, it yeah, makes no sense. Um, well, I'm sweating like a pit with one hole, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's good. Well, you get deep, man. I, I love it. Oh, um, so what, you're, it seems like you're in a, a, the, I don't know, is this the best you've ever felt in your life? Wow, yeah. I never thought about that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mentally, spiritually, uh, physically, like it's, you're, you're, you're really hitting it right now. Yeah, listen, know what happened? Um, to the best of my ability, I've gotten away from jealousy, you know, and envying Because listen, right, um, without shame, without jealousy, without envyness, where would I be? 
That's everything that inspired me to be who I wanted to be. Destroying people because I'm because I thought he was better than me. I want to fucking destroy you, motherfucker. Mm-hmm. I'm staying with his wife and his family and his mother and his father. I don't have that. I'm envious, jealous. I'm gonna fucking kill him. I want to fucking fuck him in his ass in front of his wife. Fuck you. Mm-hmm. I want somebody to love me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I was. Um. I'm a different kind of person. I'm. Um. I'm no matter of fact. I'm a lot like you, mm-hmm. and you're a lot like me. You know, you, we just package different. Mm-hmm. That's what it's goes about. That's, our whole plan is about being packaged. You know, I see how you carry yourself. I see it. you're a lot like me. A lot, yeah, you're a lot like me. We have a lot in common. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think we're both very sensitive. Oh, that's, um, that's why we who we are, because yeah. of our sensitivity. Yeah. Isn't that something? I we, know, we, I, we are who we are because of our sensitivity. And we know um, being who you are, with your rip, nobody's fucking with us. Mm-hmm. That is, I think, our security, where nobody can bully us and pick on us. In yeah. the, Anymore. Well, yeah. They used to be able to Listen, do that because we were nice guys. No, they do a different way. They sue you now. It's not a uh-huh. physical thing. Our thing is physical. <laughs> we're not conscious of the spiritual world, but I think yeah. it's, we're afraid of the physical, which is nothing. We're not afraid of the spiritual until we get older. Probably in our 50s, we get afraid of the, um, the spiritual world because it gets closer to us. Mm-hmm. The older we get, it gets closer to us. It calls us. Yeah. You're talking about death now, right? No, we're talking about the spiritual world. I don't know if it's death. Uh-huh. But I know it calls us to go somewhere. Yeah. Who do you think you are? Who do you, what do you think? What do you, now, listen, you got to think you're more than what you believe you are. Mm-hmm. You got to think to yourself when you're alone. You, you have to think, who knows that I'm thinking this shit? Mm-hmm. Who else knows? Why did I thought this shit? Where did this thought come from? Who created this thought? Yeah. Who created, who created God? Where did the thought of God come from? I could go on and on with you all this. I'm going I'm to, because I want to get to the good stuff. What you have going on now is, um, uh, tell me about your ranch that you're, that you're doing. It's the state of the art. Um, listen, um, it's just what... Um, the world is asking for. Mm-hmm. I didn't say let's do this. The world told me this is what we want. Mm-hmm. And it's a ranch where it's like a retreat no, center. It's, it's, not like a ra- it's like a resort. A resort. And it's going to have a college there. It's just, it's, it's a state of, it's the first of its kind. There's never been anything like this before. It's, um, listen, it's, it's um, Woodstock. It's Woodstock that everybody in Woodstock is a, is a graduate from fucking Harvard. That's mm-hmm. what this is. Okay, that's it. When you equate it to Woodstock, is Woodstock, everybody from Woodstock gets graduated from Harvard, compared to what we're doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so um, it's the first of its kind, and not only that, it's in um, it's in California, it's um, Palm Springs, right? Palm, yeah, Palm, Palm Springs, Springs. Yep. and Desert, Desert Hot Springs area around there, and not only that, but this is what I want to talk to you about. We also have. We purchased um, a resort in uh, Antigua. Mm-hmm. That um, Eagle's Beak, um, well, it's Hawk's Beak. Yeah, Hawk's Beak. And man, what we're about to do there is just, um, it's just amazing. And um, I'm just very grateful that the universe gave us this opportunity to, yes, um, to show ourselves, mm-hmm. to be something better than what we believe we can be. Yeah, you know, it. I something it. I never dreamed of even doing before. And, um, yeah. It makes me proud. That's good. I love it. I love it. Helping people get the best out of themselves. That's what we And I used to think about, about with the, when, when we make the money, we're going to just, you know, I already, listen, um, and all due respect, I love my wife, I love my family, I love this place, but listen, um, I fucked everybody I wanted to fuck. I had every car that I wanted to have. I had every house that I wanted to have. I had every dollar that I had, every, everything I wanted. So, um, Let's just give this shit to some people mm-hmm. that didn't have this, mm-hmm. you know. And that's just what my life is about. I want to do some instruction, just helping people, and just do things because I'm, I'm not gonna be here long. Mm-hmm. I'm under, you know. I just want to do something good because there's so much creepy shit most of my life. So I just want to do something that I think and believe that's helping people. Yeah, I have no doubt you're gonna do it on a on a huge level. And God <laughs> willing, you know, God willing. Um, what else? What other projects you got going? You still doing the the one man show? Right? Yo, pff, yeah, the we just started two. doing that. We, we, we just came back from Toronto. Listen, um, 
By the way, I love that. If you guys haven't seen the one man show, watch that. It, it, it's amazing. Listen, we changed. My <laughs> wife changed it. It's so much better than that. That other show is shit compared really? to this. Really? Oh, <laughs> I God. love that first one. Yeah, but that it was show great. Was, no, listen, but it was too hard. It was talking about life. This is fun. Well, good. You That's know, good. when I used to do my first show, I used to do it and something I couldn't do because I couldn't look at my daughter that passed away. And then some of it got a little with my sister. I said, nigga, you're getting morbid. And so we made it. She, she, she did some stuff and it became funny. Mm hmm. So, but yeah, so that's what we're doing now. It's really awesome now, and um, we're getting ready to rock the um, do an international show. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Well, I've seen that. I also saw a, a cartoon on on yeah, Cartoon listen, Network that um, you're doing. You're, you're doing listen. everything right now, man. It's 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 amazing. And, and doing hot what, hot boxing the the podcast. You're doing got so much so much shit going on. I love it. I know, but I used to like working, finding out who I am. Why do I want all this shit? Why am I doing all this shit? Uh huh. You know. I keep asking. Like, why am I doing all this shit? I think and people out there, that, that's, that's how you get better. Just keep asking questions. Why am I doing this? Who am I? Where am I from? What's going on? Why did I do that? What, it's, if you keep, I think the number one thing that you can have before you can get to any, and you need other stuff, but the key ingredient is curiosity. You better be curious uh, and, keep, and not be afraid to ask questions. And then all the other stuff that we've been talking about here, this, this, uh, these great messages that we're, that we're trying to give to you the best that we can. Uh, real quick, because I don't know, we only, we only got a little bit of time left. No, um, we got as much time as you want, brother. Uh -huh. That's what. Uh -huh. Listen, this is what we have to understand. Time doesn't exist here. Mm -hmm. Time doesn't exist here. Time is made up. We don't imagine if it wasn't no time. What would you do if it wasn't no time? Mm. That's why they made time because we did so much. Uh -huh. We did so much when out of, when when there was no control, when there was no time, we did so much. Yeah, uh, we did. So, and we didn't live long either when we didn't have concept of time. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of uh, sure. give I you a go. Listen, I say, from this, this is what I do. I say, listen, my wife always says, hey, you look good. I say, I look better in 30 more days. I always live my life in 30 days. Really? If I, if I get on the scale, I say, wait, I'm a 230, 240. I say, next month I'll be this. Or next uh -huh. month I'll do this. Next month I have that company. Next month I own this building. You know, I always put my, my life as a 30 day, um, as a 30 day extension of my existence. Uh huh. I love that. I love that because. I be, that's what I always try to tell people. 30 like, days is a habit. That's why it's do. Everything's 30 days I do, because by 30 days, that becomes your habit. I think that's a great philosophy. Um, especially, with, you know, when you think about it, like I always tell people, you got to get out of the past. Don't be driven by your past. Be drawn by your future. Lock onto that future. Yeah, but See I, it. But I pass, believe it. But our past give us, um, give us good um, inspiration for our future. Yeah, toward it. Say, hey, I don't want to go there again, or I do want to go there again, because that was a great time. Uh, sleep. Uh, I'm, I'm a big person about sleep. Do you, are you uh, like a biohacker? Do you, I know you no, do I, veganism. I, yeah, do you, but do you, I, I don't much, sleep at all. You don't three sleep hours, that much? Three hours of sleep. That's it? Yeah. Really? How, how are you going to sleep when you're trying to conquer the world? How the <laughs> fuck are you going to sleep? <laughs> but you need your rest, don't you? No way. No? You know, listen, I'm a big believer in sleep. I'm a big believer in sleep when you need it. Uh-huh. You know, like say I gotta fight, I'm gonna get some sleep for the kids. But in life, you don't need no sleep. Like we live in life. My life is like out every day doing this, fucking this person, drinking. When you leave, when you live in that life, you don't get sleep. You pass out. Uh huh. You know, it's just it's just the way people work. Mm -hmm. I'm a strong believer that sleep, sleep, um, sleep will give you a longer life. Yeah, it's it, according to the science. But there are people out there that only need about four hours of sleep. It's rare. It's it's in the one percentile. Listen, sleep. Um, lack of sleep has a lot to do with fear too. Mm -hmm. You know. Listen, can you think about this? Think about the guy in Vegas and stuff that's like fifty, whatever time he is, and um, he's dealing with life and say, "Where am I going to go? What's going to happen ten years from now? What am I doing with my life? What's going to happen? He's afraid to die. Everybody's afraid to die. So I know I'm gonna die. I'm gonna kill these motherfuckers too." I'm going to do something crazy. And he's probably not, but just death, the fact of death drives us insane. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't, some of us don't have the concept, or some of us don't want to deal with life because life will prepare us for death. They don't want to do that. They want to do it on their own terms. They don't want to give up control. And that's why they make these foolish mistakes because it's control-driven. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. It's all control-driven. <laughs> yeah. I don't matter no more. The world is going on, and I'm just an old motherfucker not doing shit, feeling sorry for myself, instead of being a part of this world and making things happen. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. I was that guy. I was one of those guys. The world owed me son. I feel sorry. And all the world had given me, and I'm still fucking a bitter, upset guy. Isn't that something? 
All 400 million million dollars are still, fuck you, nobody likes me, and they're jealous and they don't like me, and no one likes me. I didn't like myself. Mm-hmm. You know, that's why I've been married three or four times all my life. I, it's not that I, I, get, I can't get along with my wives. I can't get along with myself. I can't live with myself. Mm-hmm. It's not them. They're not the problem. I'm the problem. Well, it really seems like you're coming into that, that wisdom part of your life. Where it's, it know. seems like that. It does. You no, know, it's just, no, listen, it's, what is wisdom? Living through your fucking, wisdom is living through your fucking demise. Mm-hmm. That was wisdom. It's living through your demise. Well, learning those lessons and saying, okay, I'm not going to make those mistakes. And then you try to teach them to somebody else and they never learn. You only Sorry. listen, this is, is what, this is what I, I've learned in life. This is what I found out. That even, and, and history proved it. History proves that um, we don't learn from history. That's what history proves. That we don't learn from history. Mm-hmm. We have to touch the stove to make sure that it's hot. We have mm-hmm. to touch it. We're not going to listen. Mm-hmm. I've, I've been around wise men. I never listen to them. I respect them for the, for all their um, intelligence and everything. I, but I uh, didn't listen. Mm-hmm. And life didn't want me to listen to them. Life wanted me to go out there and try on my own. And I realized in my life that was a basis. My life was full of mistakes. I lived a life of mistakes. I know that. I lived a life of mistake. My whole existence is a mistake. But I know one thing. I did something. I made mistakes. I didn't stand on the fucking wall and do nothing. Mm, I love that. You got in there. You got in there. And that's what I always tell people. It's better to be, it's better to be in the be ring. Be in the fight. Be, be in, in the, the ring. Fight. Get the fight your ass kicked. Be in the fight of life. Fuck the ring. The fight of life. Yeah, the fight of life. Then sitting there on the, you know, in the stands watching. At least I went there. That's why people... Um, yeah. that's Go why people there. Like, that's why people like sports figures and fighters and football players and all that stuff because... It imitates life. Mm-hmm. All of us, all of our, um, I did the history of football, I did the history of fight, I did the history of gladiators, and um, gladiators are interesting, and I'm sure football, all of, all of the sports, like soccer, all that stuff, it come from war, from us having war, and soccer came from, if you can look it up, it came from like some prince or something, they killed him and they used his head for kicking, and they played soccer with his head, so that's how soccer became a sport. Mm. But most of these things happen from war. War, war, war dictated, you know, mm-hmm. football and stuff. Another team battle, another team against another team. We're fighting. And so they made it, instead of people dying, so they made it for a sport. But it took a long time, though, before people stopped dying. And then they made it into a, a legalized sport. Yeah. But it all comes from war, war-based. All this stuff war-based and everything, violence mm-hmm. and stuff. Mm-hmm. I agree. Um, you're, you're a... Food guy, like you like uh, hate food. What, what would be your last meal? Beans, 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 beans. Really? <laughs> Not like a, I don't know. <laughs> what would be my last? Like a, a pork shoulder or a or a pizza or a hamburger. Beans, huh? Yeah. Refried. Who would you share it with? Huh? Who would you share the refried beans with? Well, only ones worthy of being shared with is my children. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I yeah. love that. Listen, um, my last meal goes to my children, not to my wife or nobody else. Only my children. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you could, let's say you can pick somebody throughout history, who would uh, who would you want to sit down with and eat with? Could be, could be. I always ask this question too. It could be fictional. Uh, could be. Whatever it is. Hey, I think I'm going to do that shortly. I'm talking. I'm going to talk to Harry Belafonte, and I want to talk him and Sidney Poitier. I'd like to talk. You know what? Because I listen, they're close to 100 years old. They're 90 something, right? And so, um, and they're black, and they went to the black world, and they, they, oh, these are math. They, these guys are monsters. When I say monsters, I mean in, in a positive mm-hmm. way. In life, they were just magnificent. And I want to say, hey, I'm going to be around. I want to say, hey, teach me something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Great. It's just teach me something. Those guys got to talk about wisdom yeah. now. Yeah, teach Those me t- something. Um, what's your uh, what's your favorite book to recommend? Do you have a book that you that you loved? Well, um, yeah, I like The Prince. Mm-hmm. I like The Prince. I like I like um, Forty Eight Powers of Law too. That's all the Prince and all the, everything else wrapped up in one. Mm-hmm. You know, nice. it shows people what made them successful, and it shows them. What made them unsuccessful? Love it. What are you most proud of? Excuse me? What are you most proud of? Wow. I'm most proud of um, my kids. Mm-hmm. 
you know, I know they must think I'm I'm a difficult dad and stuff, but I'm proud of them because they're not like me. Mm. You know. Mm-hmm. And uh, how would you like to be re- remembered? Just remembered. Um, that's all. Yes, Mike Tyson existed. Mm-hmm. I love it. Last question: What's one area of your life that you'd like to improve in that you're wide open to learning more about? Mm, um, uh, how can I improve? Me improving, God, it's just, it's just, it has to be yes, mom. It's wishing my children the best. I just want to, I wish I wasn't tough. I'm, I'm a little tough sometimes. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I'm a difficult guy to live with. Yeah, I would like to, um, I don't know, I'm just afraid that they're going to be like me. I don't want them to be like me. Mm. I'd, rather them be, I'd rather them be in their career. I don't care if they're gay. I don't care if they're gay. I don't, I don't want them to be like me. Mm. I've seen sitting here talking to you for the last couple hours. Seems like there's two yous, though. There's a lot of me. There's a lot of you. Yeah. You think there's only one of you? You know I know it's not just one of you. But, but your children, though, I think this version of you now sitting here in this chair, it's a good version. Yeah. It's a good version. Tell me. Listen, it just appeared to be. I'm just here. Like I told you earlier, none of us are who we appear to be. In this sitting, and sitting like this, none of us are who we appear to be. You're not who you appear to be right now. Yeah. Well, at least the upfront version, then. That's a good version. Oh. Anyways, Mike, thank you for coming no, on Wide Open. Thank man. you. I really I'm appreciate so happy. you. Thank man. you for coming on my show. Yeah. Listen, I just always thought you were something different than what you are. Isn't that a trip? <laughs> so people must think I'm fucking different than what they <laughs> That is such a trip. Uh, that's why we have this show. People are going to see a side of you that uh, I think they're going to be like, wow. Yeah. Wow. You know what I see? I know everybody else see it too. On television. I don't know. You have to come across as a leader on television. You know, right here you're a normal guy on television. Do you make is that something that you consciously do? The Oh, when you come across on television like a motherfucker. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's what you, you play, that's what you that's just your that's what you want to do. I go in uh I go in game mode when I'm yeah, on TV. Yeah, I can respect that. You know, because it's the same thing. That's why I love doing it. That's why I thought that you had an a army background. I always thought you had an army background the way that you conduct yourself on television. Uh-huh. But that must be with the football. The, the it's kind of the football thing. Like, the, like let's go. Let's, let's get after it. Let's everybody come. Let's have a good time and win and have some fun. That's, that's kind of my thing is I want to have some fun. <laughs> I, want, I want to work hard. I want to love what I'm doing, and I want to have fun while I'm doing it, and I want to laugh. I want to play. I don't want to. I don't want to work. You know, I was too young. I didn't understand what I was doing when I was fighting. I was just too fucking young. Yeah, doing this shit. I was so young for you. I mean, being a world, the world champion at twenty. My God, I mean that's 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 a lot of that's a lot of pressure you for know, a young person. You know what made Ali special? I know I'm bringing this up, but know what made him special? Um, for some reason, I just want to. Um, like, I, I don't know. I would say, fucking worship me. I'll fucking kill you, motherfucker. And Ali is this. If you call me your champion, I'll die for you. Mm-hmm. If you say I'm your champion, I'll die for you in the ring. What the fuck? Ooh, Ali is, ooh, God damn. <laughs> Woo! We're talking about deep food. Yeah. Oh. It's just, it's just, um, you can't understand his competitiveness. And, um, Everything he did in the ring as a fighter was wrong. He fucking never threw a body punch in his life. He pulls back. No one pulls back from punches. That's the worst thing in boxing. The first thing you learn in boxing, don't pull back. Ali pulls back. The first thing you learn in boxing, hit him in the body because you can slow them down. Ali never threw a body punch in his fucking career. You can watch all his fights. Everything that he does was against boxing rules to be great. And he became the greatest. Yeah. And that just comes from his... Deep down in the belief and will that he believes who he is. Yeah. He believes that he's the greatest of all times and nobody can match him. Yeah. And that's part of that, that's part of that acceptance and being authentic to who you are and quit trying to be like everybody else. Do it your way and you will have greatness. 
Yeah, in your perspective, maybe you won't be a fighting champion or, or like I said, a, a Hall of Famer or, bi- you know, a billionaire ris- businessman. But if you stay true to who you are and not compare yourself and just know that you got what it takes, like Muhammad Ali, and say, I am the greatest, uh, you, you're going to have good things. Good things will come to you. All right, let me tell you. I'm going to say this before the show is over, right? Julius Caesar. All of his accomplishments, his ego was out of the fucking world. The greatest conquered, he conquered God, conquered all these fucking Germany, he conquered everything. And then he came across, he was in some country, and it was, um, what was it? It could have been Persia, whatever it was. It was, um, and then they showed, um, it, and in the country they were at, it was a, it was a bust of Alexander the Great. And it showed his accomplishments. And Caesar saw that and he started crying. At 33, Caesar's at 50 something. He started old. He had, at 24, this guy ruled, he, he conquered the world. At 20 fucking four. Yeah. So Jesus, Caesar is fucking cried. And that's how I feel about Ali. Mm-hmm. My ego is so fucking big. I'm the greatest of all time. And then I look at him and then I realize that I'm not. Mm-hmm. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Being humble like that. All the greats get humble. All the people in history, they have to be humble in order to be great. Yeah. Good thing. Mike, thanks again for coming. It's great being on here with you. (laughs) Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, Thanks for listening to Wide Open. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe on all podcast platforms. And hit me up on social media at Tony Gonzalez 88 Love to hear from you, answer any questions, uh, and just wanted to say thank you.